Titan Zed here, back to do one more video review, just because I really want to get this one off my plate, and I've been kind of holding back on it. Transformers Prime, Arms Micron, AM24, Silas Breakdown. Or Breakdown, Silas, but I prefer the term Silas Breakdown, as Silas is in control. Um, now... This is my first Arms Micron I'm reviewing. It wouldn't be the first Arms Micron I've gotten. I got the Viacon repaint, or Viacon Jet repaint, as well as the third repaint of this mold. I don't have a war breakdown, unfortunately. The only site I found that's still selling them is um, uh, TF Source, and they want a ridiculous $86 for it. Yeah, I just settled for the repaints instead. Now he does come with a little arms micron uh, uh, praying mantis called Magi is how it's pronounced in English. Uh, Magi or Maju in Japanese, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. It's one of the few I don't know how to pronounce right. It's supposed to be a praying mantis. Eh, out of the three arms microns I've built... This is easily the weakest. Uh, his little things are just very loose and gangly. And it's it's just not a good one. To top it off, I don't know what his weapon mode is supposed to be. You transform him, you, you fold the arms back, you fold this back, and you put these forward. And I, for the life of me, cannot figure out what this is. I, I would originally guess it was a stabbing weapon, but... Or a taser? But that doesn't really strike me as Silas's weapon of choice. You know, someone like him deserves a gun. Um, and this is something I actually wanted to bring up with both the Silas Breakdown and the Nemesis Prime, since these were built by Mech, who don't have a complete understanding of Star Transformers technology, I very well doubt they'd have a complete understanding of ARMS Micron technology. So it would make me doubt that they could make a proper arms micron and my idea in my head would be kind of cool is they make more of an arms micron mutant like the old beast war mutants that had two beast modes and a robot head that sticks out but it does not have a robot mode and where it has two weapon modes and maybe a robot head stuck in the middle you can find halfway through a transformation of one and i thought that would be something so cool to do and yeah but still it's not a, this one, eh, it's okay, I don't have the Nemesis Prime, I really do want him, and his actually looks kind of cool, but, this is his, the only difference between him and, say, War Breakdown, is the vacuum metalized, very shiny, front bumper piece, uh, this is the only major change next to the head made, uh, as you can see throughout the body, you have these kind of damaged cut looks, uh, on the instructions, it only tells you where to put like the Decepticon symbols and a lot of the and a lot of the um, main decal stickers. Yes, they come with stickers. It's incredibly frustrating to put on. Parents, uh, do note these are these Japanese ones were more built were more atoned for uh, the adult collector rather than a child. So yeah. Um. But yeah, these a bunch of these were occluded on the set. They allowed you to put them on wherever you wanted. So I stuck a few kind of throughout the truck mode and the robot mode. So it kind of looks like he is damaged like he did in the show. Um, speaking of which, Silas became this after his failed Nemesis Prime project, Project Chimera, was defeated by the real Optimus Prime. And thanks to... Uh, uh, Agent Fowler fighting him. He got crushed by Nemesis Prime after he toppled through the uh, building, and after Mech discovered the body of uh, Breakdown after he was killed by Arachnid, uh, spoiler, <clears throat> uh, oops, he uh, got his got his. I would guess his entire body transferred inside uh, 
breakdown, it was never really made clear how much of his torso is actually inside. And speaking of which, inside here, there's a little gray, extra gray piece that War Breakdown and the Swerve Mold don't have, where it is Silas inside the, what I guess is the Power Master Control Harness. But yeah, that's kind of, that was a nice addition. They didn't have to put that in, but they made sure they did. Oh, wait. So when he did that, he kind of went... He kind of gave his mech scientists a case of uh, the murder to pretty much... Uh, and decided he wanted to work with the Decepticons. It didn't work out too well for him in the end after he kind of played his trump card. And it failed miserably. Um, he, we do see him later in... Uh, Beast Hunters, he's one. Of, he is uh, one of Knockout's experiments, and he's experimenting the synthesized Energon formula on him, and it's not working out too well for him, especially after they add a little dark Energon. Uh, he eventually uh, breaks free, runs around, finds Arachnid, tries to, and when he gets this synthesized Energon in him with the dark Energon infused with it. It kind of turns him into a pseudo vampire slash zombie uh, transformer, which is kind of awesome. Um, he gets out. Originally, we don't. We originally we think that Arachnid manages to get away without being turned, but at the end of the episode, we find out she is one of those things is still living on Cybertron's moon. Um, yeah. Uh. But at the end of the episode, he or the midway through that episode, he dies by Arachnid's hands. She kind of tears up his entire torso until he just, yeah, and dies. So, yeah, but still, this is an awesome mold. Honestly, I would have preferred in the show if Silas managed to escape without being turned into a zombie vampire thing and rebuilt Nemesis Prime and started making mass production Viacon drones for him to control and him start attacking both sides both Autobot and Decepticon I think that would have been a much more awesome idea it could have led to some really cool power struggles uh, in the show but yeah uh, now he does have a really good head mold it color wise it doesn't follow the show too well but mold wise it follows it nearly perfectly with like the extra eyepiece that was put back in after Silas kind of stole it from Breakdown. Um, my only complaint, yet again, is the Arms Micron. I swear this has got to be the weirdest pairing. Because um, it can't fit... Because of this peg, it can't fit in his hand too well. And you have to put it on the peg just above his hand. And uh, yeah. Personally, I think it's one of the worst... I want to get him another Arms Micron of some other kind to give him because he really needs something better. But other than that, he is a really good mold. Um, if you don't have any of the War Breakdown mold, this is a definite uh, this is a definite pickup, I would say, as well. Especially since it actually did show up in the show. Well, not quite with these colors. So... But still, it's pretty awesome. I recommend it. Uh, I recommend it for collectors. For children, not so much. Like I said, he has a lot of stickers. And a child is going to have a lot of trouble getting some of these on. Unless the kid somehow knows the X-Acto knife trick. Uh, what that is, is you take an X-Acto knife or a box cutter blade. Put the sticker on the edge of it. Line up where it needs to go, then pull this, pull the blade out from underneath the sticker, and then put it, on, then press the sticker on the rest of the way. If the kid can't do that, he's gonna have a hard time putting all the stickers on here. Um, I really think Japan marketed this for more these figures more for collectors than they did children. Um, because this is a little model kit practically. I know no child is gonna have the patience to, to even for something this small is going to, pardon me, have a little trouble putting this little guy together. Um, yeah, 
I I love this mold. I would recommend it. I wish it came with a better arms micron. That's just my opinion. But other than that, it's not too bad. I definitely would still recommend it. Yeah, I can you can still find it at bigbadtoystore.com for about forty dollars plus shipping as of the time of this recording. Um but yeah, it's pretty cool. I recommend it. So until next time, this is Tight Zed saying I'll see ya when I see ya.